Three, two, one, ignition. Lift off. The space shuttle Jupiter Two, en route from Earth to Saturn on a routine flight is under command of Craig Robinson, a recent graduate of the Space Academy. His crew, a robot, Series 1A, 1998, named Robon. Do we have a course deviation? Negative. What is our estimated time of arrival? ETA Saturn star time, 0600. Link Robinson is spending his Easter vacation with his brother, Commander Craig Robinson. But Dina, if we can't penetrate those steam clouds around Jupiter, we'll never know if there's life there. Also on board is Dina Carmichael, geologist. She is on her way to the Saturn space station to relieve the on-duty geologist who is up for rotation. You know, Link, the surface temperatures on this planet are hundreds of degrees hotter than anything we experience on Earth. Therefore, no life, as we know it, could survive. Indeed. The other passenger aboard the Jupiter 2 is Dr. Zachary Smith, a professor of biology on his sabbatical from Earth University. Well, my dear boy, bear in mind that Miss Carmichael is a geologist, a field which is known for the tunnel vision of its practitioners. You and I, my boy, permit our minds to expand. We are not bound by the pragmatic. Our imagination and courage leap unrestrained. Danger! Danger! No! Danger! It's nature. Meteorite field, quadrant A. They're coming right at us. Hard to port. The travel agency assured me there was no danger. Take it easy, Dr. Smith. We're about to be smashed to smithereens by meteors, and he says, take it easy. All power pods full throttle. Power pods full throttle. What's the rate of separation? Negative. Meteorites traveling one and three-eighths times our speed. Look! Save me! Save me! Back in your seat. Everybody, back in your seats. Strap yourselves in. Activate meteor shield. Meteor shield activated. Come on, Dr. Smith. I should never have come on this trip. My delicate health will never survive the strain. Link! We're being bombarded by meteors. Will our shields hold? Insufficient data. Do something, you bumbling bucket of bolts. Our astrogator is damaged. It reads 100,000 miles per second. Reduce speed. Throttle is frozen. Speedometer reading 150,000 miles per second. I rerouted the astrogator circuit. That should do it. Activate astrogator. Astrogator activated. Hooray! Please calm yourselves. Calm ourselves? You're the one that wasn't calm. Only out of concern for you two young people. I assure you, I was thinking only of you. Surely, Commander Robinson, we're out of danger now. Course for Saturn, Robon? Cannot compute. Star system, unfamiliar. It can't be. Logic indicates it is our star system, but it is not. Well, what star system is it? Insufficient data. Bah, sir. What is this doddering dunderhead trying to tell us? That we are in an unfamiliar part of our galaxy. We're no longer in our star system. But, Craig, how could that be? We passed through that meteor field only a few minutes ago. Well, we could have hit a space warp. We could have been thrown billions of miles off course. Space warp possibility, one in 10,000, but feasible. It appears that we are lost in space. For days, the Jupiter 2 travels through the deep black void of space, 
hunting for some familiar star system, some guidepost to point them in the right direction. But through all the millions of miles they travel, they find nothing to offer hope. Contact, contact. What contact, Robon? Sensors indicate planet with life forms, quadrant B. Get direction fix on planet. The planet with the life form reading is number three. We're homing in on that mysterious planet. Oh, dear. Maybe they'll be able to tell us the way home. Those life forms will probably be completely alien to us. They may not be friendly. Not friendly indeed. My dear young lady, I have yet to meet the human, no matter how hostile, that I haven't been able to charm into a friendly posture. Robon, put us in orbit around the planet. Orbit mode in force. Give me a scan. Temperature range and atmosphere similar to Earth. One phenomenon. We have a reading of a generated energy of enormous magnitude. Advise caution. Agreed. Don't break orbit. There's life on that planet, Commander Robinson. Surely you can't delay going down to the surface. I can and will delay, Dr. Smith, until I check it out thoroughly. Indeed, I most vehemently protest your action, and I will see that you are reported to the proper authorities. Danger! Danger! Evasive action! Affirmative. Well, do something, you innocuous ineptitude. Activate defensive shields. Defensive shields activated. How about the defensive shields? Holding, but will buckle under one more direct hit. Abandon ship, you hear? Abandon ship. That would be foolish, Dr. Smith. Don't stand there spouting childish prattle when there's not a moment to lose. To the escape pods! To the escape pods! Damage report. Malfunction in number one power pod. Ignore the women and children first rule. There's room in the escape pod for all of us. We can't abandon ship, not until we get into their atmosphere. Break orbit. Breaking orbit. They've stopped the attack. Oh, thank heavens. I think we're going to meet some hostile people, Dr. Smith. You better get ready to charm them into a friendly posture. My dear boy, I am sure that if we explain our predicament in the proper manner, they will be most helpful. I hope. Prepare for landing. Retro rockets prime. Fire retro rockets one and two. Malfunction in number one retro. Fire backup retros. Backup retros fire. Malfunction. Malfunction. Hang on, everybody. We're going to hit hard. Touchdown. Hold on. Applying brake. Compute landing. Compute landing. Wherever we are, we're here. Everybody all right? My back is permanently destroyed. You certainly will not get any awards from the Space Academy for a perfect landing. Commander? I'm okay, Craig. Dina, you hurt? Just my dignity. All right, let's find out why they shot us down. How do you do, gentlemen? We come to you from outer space with greetings from the planet Earth. It is the wish of our government. Come, come. Something's worrying him. Yes, I trust the edge of those lances aren't poisoned. Come. He wants us to go with him. I vote against such a foolish move. Quick, come. I think we better do as he says. We would be fools to go with him after they shot us down. But look at those primitive weapons and their garments. They couldn't have sent up those lightning bolts. They lack the technology. The Kirillo! The Come! Do as he says! Let's go!
Wow, they're pretty strange creatures. Faster! Faster! Terranovas never come into the forest after us. Odd? Yes, they do not come into the forest. And they do not harm children. Yes, it is odd. We thank you for warning us. My name is Craig. I am Lar. We are Throgs. Dina, my brother Link, Dr. Smith, and Robon. We've lost our way on a space journey. My pleasure, Mr. Lar. I've seen a lot of strange evolutions in our solar system, but nothing like this. Evolution on this planet different, but not unusual. I don't think the throgs are nearly as strange as those Tyrannos. All metallic and no faces. It's sure lucky for us the throgs happen to come along. Come, we go to Throg's village. Come. Are we being too naive, Commander? Trusting a frog? Throgs, Dr. Smith. They call themselves throgs. <laughs> How would you feel about living in one of those lily pads, Link? What I feel is hungry. And I watched as they fell out of the sky. Yes, the Tyrannos too came out of the sky. The Tyrannos attacked us, damaged our spaceship. He speaks the truth, Cal. I saw the Tyrannos shoot their bolt of light at them. Without reason. The Tyrannos never need a reason. They began to poison the land, making it impossible for anything to grow. Each year, more of our land is poisoned. We are doomed, unless the Tyrannos are stopped. Our weapons are useless against them. Since you came out of the sky, like the Tyrannos did, you might have the knowledge to help us. There are weapons inside our spaceship that could be effective against the Tyrannos, if you will guide us back. The Tyrannos will have posted guards. Well, the only way we can help you is by you helping us to get back into the Jupiter, too. I cannot ask my people to take the risk. Even if it means their survival? I will not force them to go onto the hard surface if they are afraid. I've got to go back to Jupiter, too. But the frogs won't take us back. I would say that for frogs, they are showing very good sense. If I can't assess the damage to Jupiter 2 and figure out a way to repair it, we'll never get off this planet. I will help you. I would rather live free for a short time than live forever afraid. Well, at least there are only two. I hope nothing will happen to Lar. I told him not to take any chances. All we need is a few minutes. It all depends on Lar. Oh, Tyrannos. Here I am, metalheads. Let's go. Soon as I check the power pods, we'll be on our way. Hurry, Craig. The Tyrannos may be coming back. <laughs> Craig, hurry! Just what I was afraid of. Our power pods are burned out. That wouldn't create an acid odor, would it? No. Don't you smell the acid in the air? Well, now that you mention it, Dina, there is an acidy taint in the atmosphere. I've been a staff geologist on most of the planets in our solar system. This ground is like no ground I've ever seen before. The Turinos, they're back! Now to get back to the others. Incredible! These children are playing marbles with diamonds. The 
that is mine. In a moment, my young amphibian. Read out, Ninny. Pure white diamond, five carats. Value in earth money? Seven thousand dollars. Mm-hmm. My dear young amphibian, would you care to discuss a trade? This priceless watch for half a dozen of those worthless marbles. I think that young amphibian would like his marble back, Dr. Smith. He would? Oh, yes, of course he would. Now, about our trade, this priceless watch. Price of watch in Earth money, $3.75. Silence, you pusillanimous pipsqueak. Who asked you to butt into a legitimate business transaction? I'm willing to make you dear people a deal you cannot refuse. This magnificent large timepiece for three of your itsy-bitsy worthless marbles. He wants to play you for it, Dr. Smith. Your watch against his diamond. Ah, a sporting proposition. The fact that I was ring marble champion of my grammar school has nothing to do with my eagerness to accept the challenge. You may go first, young frog. Hey, I think it's the bug. You have returned. Good. Where is Lar? He did not return. Craig is back. Come on, Dr. Smith. I'll join you as soon as I pick up all the marbles. Where are you going, Craig? To find Lar. If Lar is not here by now, I'm afraid the Tyrannos have found him first. Maybe, but I've got to try to find him. He's out there somewhere because of us. <laughs> am I glad to see you? As I am to see you. Oh, dear. Now I must go home. You've got to give me a chance to get even. It's not fair. Well... I have a genuine good luck charm from the West Indies. Dr. Smith! Craig wants all of us for a talk! Can't you see I'm busy, Link? But he says it's important! He wants us now! I shall come when I am ready to come. You are ready now. Oh, put me down at once, you traitorous, templated, transistorized tyrant! Dr. Smith reporting as ordered, Commander. I protest this outrage, Commander. I wish to bring charges against this clanking clot. All in due time, Dr. Smith. Right now, we have an important matter to discuss. No! Oh, put me down, you mechanical misfit! What is more important than a man's dignity? Perhaps survival. We've checked out the Jupiter 2. Our power pods are burned out. What does that mean? That unless we can find another source of power, we will not be able to lift off this planet. And there's only one source where we can get it. The Tyrannos. But how can you get it from them? The simplest way. Ask them. The Tyrannos are barbarians. They are beyond reason. They will give nothing. What about this barbarian holding me? Release Dr. Smith. Have you ever tried to communicate with them? Talk things over? Our legend tells us that when the Tyrannos first came to our land, a council went to welcome them and was immediately attacked. Well, perhaps if I could talk to them, maybe... Before you would have a chance for one word, you would be struck down by their lightning bolts. Then what we have to do is get in some words before they strike us down. <laughs> Remote controlled energy cells will generate enough power to propel vehicles. Let's try it out. Power on. I still don't see what he expects to accomplish. He wants to talk with the Tyrannos. Greetings from Earth, Tyrannos. We come in friendship. Why put us through all this extra work? I'm simply not strong enough. Why not use the bug? You heard what Lar warned us about. The Tyrannos will attack it the moment it leaves the forest. That's why Craig isn't using the bug. He doesn't want it destroyed. Take care of Link, Robon. Record it. And see that Dr. Smith doesn't get into any trouble. Impossible. 
I'll attend to you later, you Neanderthal ninny. Can I come, Craig? No, I want you here where it's safe. But Lars said the Tyrannos don't harm children. I'm not taking any chances with my kid brother. See you in a little while, Link. We are coming near the hard ground. Yes, I can smell the acid in the air. This is as far as the bug goes. Where's the Jupiter 2? It's gone. Lar, are we in the right place? Yes, yes, the Tyrannos have taken it away. Oh, Craig, what do we do now? What we came out here to do, contact the Tyrannos. What if the Tyrannos don't come? The Tyrannos will come. That's just about where the Jupiter 2 landed. It's nowhere in sight. Listen! Here they come! Wait! Or you will not have time. Greetings, Tyrannos! We come from the planet Earth! Greetings, Tyrannos! They prepare to attack. We come in peace! They won't listen! As I warned! Tyrannos! We mean you no harm! We come in peace from planet Earth. We are friends. How do we reach things like that? Maybe Lar is right. Maybe we can't. This shore isn't one of the brightest days in my life. Our spaceship missing, the attempt to contact the Tyrannos a dismal failure. There is no way to fight the Tyrannos. There might be. Dina, if you've got an idea that'll work. I believe I have, but I'd like to think it out before I tell you about it. What is this, my dear friend? My mother says it is not fair the way I got them. I must give them back. Mother is right, and so I will take them back for your mother's sake. You like the watch, Brack? Well, I'm sure your mother wouldn't object to a little trade then. One of your marbles for this timepiece. Oh. <laughs> fraud! Fraud! Silence, you garrulous gargoyle. Link, you saw how happy I made the young frog, and think how happy he made me. I wonder where they got these. The Tyrannos throw them away. What? Throw them away? When they lose their power for the Tyrannos, they throw them away. Indeed, they must have scads of diamonds to discard them so cavalierly. Their hills are covered with them. Covered with them, you say? How very interesting. What lovely hills they must have. I'm worried, Dr. Smith. No need to worry, my boy. I'll figure a way to get into those hills. I'm worried about Craig and the others. They should have been back by now. The Tyrannos might have... Listen! Craig is back! Read out. Zinc and carbon in approximately equal portions. What's Dina doing? Trying to prove out a theory, Link. The acidy odor in the air over the hard surface. Did you get a reading? Insufficient exposure. If that odor indicated ammonia chloride and zinc and carbon was also present, what would be your conclusion? That electricity was being generated by means of an ancient method. The old-fashioned dry cell battery used in the middle of the 20th century? Affirmative. Just as I suspected. What did you suspect, Dina? First of all, have you noticed the Tyrannos always travel in pairs. Yes, I guess they do. Well, think of one as a positive and the other as a negative. You're suggesting that instead of a bloodstream, the life force of the Tyrannos is electricity? Yes, and in manufacturing the components for their life force, the zinc and carbon and ammonia is polluting the land. Oh, and that's why the Tyrannos never chase the frogs into the forest. One is positive and one is negative, and the laws of physics are universal. What law? What physics? 
The Tyrannos must operate in twos. One without the other could not move. Or think. What has that got to do with the Tyrannos not coming into the forest? Dina says the trees are a natural, insulating material. If a tree got between two Tyrannos, it would become immobilized. Well, if the mountain won't come to Mohammed, then Mohammed must go to the mountain. Who's Mohammed? An ancient Eastern philosopher who just suggested a course of action to me. Careful, careful. Careful, careful. Our spaceship is gone, correct? Correct. And your brother failed in his mission, correct? Uh, I guess so. His intention was good, but his methods were poor. This situation calls for a man of my diplomatic skills. Negative, negative. Hold your tongue, you jabbering jackanape. I will approach them in a civilized manner. But you can't approach them, Dr. Smith. You know what happened to the vehicle. Ah, yes, the vehicle. And it will happen to adults. But remember, children are not harmed. And you are a child. You will lead me to the diamonds. Uh, that is to say, I mean the Tyrannos. You will report to the commander immediately. Wait a minute, Robot. We have to find the Jupiter, too. And I'm probably the only one who can do it. Report to the commander. Report to the commander. Robot, will you stop following us, please? Danger, danger. I'm in no danger. I've got to find the Jupiter, too. Report to the commander. Report to the commander. Report to the... You report to the commander, you lily-livered lummox. The hard surface. Yes, this is Tyranno Country Link. Danger, danger. My boy, it is a far, far better thing we do today. Uh-oh. Oh, good heavens, that sound! Turn it off! Wow, we! It is a child. Tell them that we are friends, uh, that we love them. We love all the peoples of the universe. I think you better tell them, Dr. Smith. Come. Hey, this is kind of fun, Dr. Smith. Fun, my foot. You have explained, and still I do not understand. I understand, but I can't believe it can be. It is our feeling, Cal, that electricity is the life force of the Tyrannos. It's too complicated to explain what electricity is, but for electricity to work, there must be a positive pole and a negative. What has that to do with our people weaving mats? Insulation. Insulation? If we can get a mat between any two Tyrannos, we will immobilize them. It will not be easy to get a mat between two Tyrannos. We have a backup system. I'm adjusting these blazers in hope that I can change the polarity of one of each pair of Tyrannos. That is too much for my understanding. Well, I'm going to fix it so that the Tyrannos will repel each other rather than attract. And if what you are doing does not work? Well, then we're all in a lot of trouble. Emergency. Emergency. Uh-oh, trouble. Emergency, emergency, emergency. Look, Dr. Smith, there's our spaceship. I knew I could find it. Right now, there is small satisfaction in seeing that bucket of bolts. in peace. Oh, yes, indeed. You'll never find anybody more peace-loving than we are. We do not believe in peace. But that's wrong. If you and the throgs would... You will not talk of the throgs. Listen to the child. No child has ever harmed us. But they grow into adults. On our planet eons ago, strangers came from another star system. Like you, they said they came in peace and seemingly were unarmed. They betrayed us. 
destroyed our cities. A few of our ancestors managed to escape to this planet to rebuild our civilization. Your technology is polluting the land and the air. The throngs will starve unless you stop. Our survival depends on that technology. Surely a civilization that has such enormous wealth. Wealth? Diamonds. Now, we would be willing in exchange for your diamonds. Silence. Only the child may speak. Why don't you get together with the throgs? Talk things over. We trust nobody that is not of our kind. Then you will always be afraid. When we go back to the throng. You are not leaving here. He is only a child. Keep the other, but let him go. No. <laughs> no, please. You don't want me. I'm just trouble wherever I go. I'm bad luck. A jinx. You've forgotten the lessons of our own history. They have seen too much. They cannot live. Yes, you are right, as always. My, they are trusting souls. They didn't lock us in. They've locked us in. Don't talk like a child. Watch. It's easy. Don't, Dr. Smith. No! Are you okay? Mm, they tricked me. It's no trick, Dr. Smith. It's a force field, an invisible barrier. I don't believe in anything I can see. I think you'd better believe it, Dr. Smith. Link, he said we can't ever leave. That's what he said, but he doesn't know Craig. Craig will get us out. Craig? What can Craig do against these metal monsters? Dina. Remember I adjusted the blazer to impact positive ions? Which means a Tyranno who carries the negative charge will not be affected by impact. You understand, Dina. We've got to impact the ones who are positive to neutralize them. How do we tell which is which? We can't. The flying platforms of the Tyrannos are metal. Those lances you made will fall harmlessly to the ground. No, Lar. I have magnetized the flat ends of each lance. Look. That mat will act as insulation and freeze them where they are. Ready, everybody? Ready. Ready. Then we move out. Danger. Danger. Oh, hurry, Craig. Don't run. Up ahead. Perfect. Is everything set? I've got the spears. Blazes are ready. Let's go. Robe on two. Robe on, create a diversion. Strike down the alley for a strike and a spare. <laughs> Supply a diversion for him. You hit the negative one. He's not affected. Now I know which is positive. There's some more. Above you are. Link, my dear boy, no doubt it is futile to attempt to escape through that window. You're right again, Dr. Smith. Oh, my dear boy, how wrong I've been. Don't start blaming yourself again, Dr. Smith. Oh, you're very kind, Link, the way you keep trying to absolve me. But it is my fault, I know it, I am to blame. And now look where my greed has brought us. 
Can you ever forgive me? I forgive you. Believe me, if ever we get out of this, never, never again, I promise you, will I let avarice color my judgment. Never will I let false values sully my loyalty to my fellow man. <laughs> well, Dr. Smith, I bet that's what's polluting the Throg planet. Even more significant than that, my boy. It is likely that that is how they make their diamond. It looks like pictures I once saw of an old-time flashlight battery. If I could get back to Earth with a bag of those diamonds... Remember what you said. Remember what you said about greed, Dr. Smith. Oh, my dear boy, you should be more tolerant of human weakness. And there is no weakness as human as my need for those diamonds. How can you think of that at a time like this? Simple. It would mean I'd never have to go back to teaching, never have to answer the questions of hot, little, inquisitive minds. To you, Link, that might be just a flashlight battery belching smoke, but to me, to me, it means freedom. All right, our decoys are set. Action would be returned to them only if the positive polarity of one tyranno would be changed again to negative. Robon, can you figure out this flying platform? No power pods as we know them. No rockets. Propulsion system. Probably magnetic. Simple button control. Right button for liftoff. Center button for propulsion. Left button for descent. Then you can operate it. Affirmative. Robon, contact. The Tyrannol City. How do we get in? We join them, follow them down. The Jupiter 2. Craig, shouldn't we check out the Jupiter 2? No, our first priority is to find Link and Dr. Smith without a confrontation with the Turinos, if possible. We will not be so lucky. Let's follow them in. Report a foreign element has invaded our domain. Eliminate the foreign element. Dina, you and Lar check out that corridor. Robon, I'll take this one. Listen, they know we are here. Alarm system. All exits automatically blocked. Oh, if we ever get out of this, I'll never mention diamonds again as long as I live. It's all right, Dr. Smith. Remember, you don't harm children. Do what you want with me, but spare this child. Take it easy, Dr. Smith. Let's hope it's Craig coming to get us out. This way. Of course he's all right. Do you think I'd let anything happen to this child? I'm sorry we caused everybody so much trouble, Dina. You shouldn't have come here against Craig's orders. You do owe him an apology, Link. I know. Look out! They have us behind a force field. I'll have you out in a second. If I find the switch... More turinos. <laughs> Now, intruder. Test the force field. It's off. Let's go. Attention. The foreign elements are still not taken. All Tyrannos will concentrate on their elimination. It is our failing as rulers that we permitted the first Earthlings to enter. It is your failing that you refuse to talk with the throgs. Danger! Danger! Don't! No doubt he has a powerful weapon. Why should we talk to the throgs? So that you can all survive. We once trusted those not of our kind, and we were nearly eliminated. What is that cylinder? It is the source of their energy, the plant that manufactures their life force. 
We will talk to you no more than we will talk to the Throgs. I beg you to trust me. I can destroy your life source. Let us trust him. No. Geronos to the ruling chamber, quickly. No, you're forcing me to... He's running down! His power's gone! I think Craig is out of his mind, restoring the Tyrannos. I myself am not so sure it is a good thing. But if Craig wants it done, I will do it. The least he should ask for is acres of diamonds. You weren't going to mention diamonds again, Dr. Smith. Never again. As long as I live. Ready for the final seal, Craig? Go ahead. You sure you want this? Yes. All repaired, Craig. Suppose they don't appreciate Craig's gesture in bringing them back. We have gathered up these diamonds. Without them, they cannot shoot off their bolts of lightning. Ah, oh, I wonder if... No, Dr. Smith, you can't have any. Craig says we must give them back as a sign of good faith. Good, he says. You have brought us back. Yes, with the help of the Throgs. Why? To prove the Throgs are your friends. See, they have given you back your power. It was arrogant and stupid of us to think ill of everyone but our own kind. Yes, we must make it up to that. We owe much to you and your friends, Craig. And we will never forget what you have done for us. How can we show our gratitude? With your knowledge, you can show us a better way to work our land, grow more food. And now that you know the need, you can use your technology to erase the pollution. We will do that gladly. You'd think they could spare one tiny little... Bite your tongue, Dr. Smith. Oh, sadness. Oh, sorrow. Strap yourselves in, everybody. All right, Commander. You made the Throgs and Tyrannos happy. Now you can make us happy and find the way home. I'll try, Dr. Smith. Lift off, Robon. Not yet, Commander. You infamous informer. Why don't you mind your own business? I didn't think there'd be any harm in taking one little old diamond as a souvenir. Robon, drop the diamond out of discharge vent. Will do. Ready for liftoff, Robon. Liftoff.